Hi, welcome to Just Thinking Out Loud. My name is Desiree. This is my obligatory coronavirus video because everyone is talking about it and worried about it, myself included. I have holed myself away for a couple of weeks now and probably will do it for at least the next month, even though the peak of this epidemic or pandemic is going to be later, much later in the year, most likely. The purpose of this video is not necessarily about updating you on all the facts because I think that already exists out there on social media but I wanted to talk about things through a more cultural lens how different countries have responded to the coronavirus and how you might be able to do case studies later in the future about what a certain society is like and how that affects their response to threats I guess internal or external so I'm going to be talking about say China's response and then also the US his response or lack thereof of response and then also looking at South Korea and how they were the total opposite of China in terms of transparency and I also want to talk about the public versus private response within the context of different countries and the state saying something versus the people sharing information on social media and then moving forward with schools needing to be closed and people being asked to self-isolate themselves and how these things might play out because I think it's really interesting so that's what i'm going to be talking about oh my god what am i doing coronavirus specifically refers to the covid 19 virus that everyone's talking about nowadays but the coronavirus as a biological term refers to a family of viruses that cause respiratory illnesses and SARS was one, I didn't even know that before looking it up. You are probably already updated, but to give some quick facts, as of Thursday, March 5, 2020, 97,000 people have been infected and more than 3,000 have died. The US has only had 11 deaths. It's in at least 87 countries, including China. More than 280 deaths have been reported outside of mainland China, compared to the 80,000 400 in mainland China and I'm going to be showing this image it's from John Hopkins and it has been tracking everything the first time I saw this it was like 30,000 and it's gone up a lot more since then and the global fatality rate is at about 3.4 percent I think I heard somewhere that the virus doubles about every six days depending on the country so even though it might not be a lot of cases right now like 11 in the US or very few like 30 in South Korea it was at one point and then one person spread it much further than that it grows very rapidly now the first thing I want to talk about is China's response to it they knew about it all the way back in December the end of December in Wuhan China there was a seafood market and there was a doctor that had a patient his name was Li Wenliang and he shared with other people at his hospital on WeChat what was going on and then as you already know he was silenced by the Chinese government and he was told to not speak about it because he was spreading rumors in their estimation and spreading false information. China was very worried about keeping up their image. All eight doctors were charged by the Wuhan police for illegal acts of fabricating, spreading rumors, and disrupting social order. Of course, that's a translation from Chinese, but that's what I found on Wikipedia. He was an ophthalmologist and he later died on February 7 after contracting the disease January 7 I believe and if people had just listened to him beforehand or rather if the Chinese government and the police for the Hubei province which is where Wuhan is located had listened to him and if the Chinese culture were different that is both the people and the government in terms of the image that they're worried about or telling people what they can share amongst each other then things might have been different I'm not sure about the delay in announcement but in the spread because people could have started to take precautions from earlier on I didn't set up a quarantine in China until the 23rd of January and that's when they decided to stop allowing traffic in or out of the city and we're starting to see all these images of the government locking people inside their homes and a lot of that could have been avoided if they had just listened to this doctor in the first place now I want to talk about the United States. 
So people were sharing all of this information on social media and I heard about it, but I didn't know if I should really worry that much. The media hadn't picked up on it before the regular people communicating with each other were freaking out. Some people were accusing others of overreacting. I don't think we would really know until we see it plays out whether or not people were overreacting in countries other than China. I got some emails from the school I was going to and that has a lot of students from China and they were just saying if you're coming from China here are the symptoms don't travel for the holiday season and come into the, the school medical center before you do anything else and you know what I had actually gone to the library because there's super fast internet there very early in the holiday holiday season and I almost regret doing it now but that was when things were really just starting to pick up in early January all people could go on and can go on is symptoms and so I also want to talk about the CDC response they are called the Center for Disease Control so this is supposed to be their SHIT and <laughs> they're still not prepared they have been trying to make and distribute test kits since early January and they didn't do well early January mid January like February 12 they announced that they were still having troubles because the quality control wasn't very good and only through some research I found out that there was a private company called Roche in Switzerland that January 31st had already made available a commercial version of it of testing for the coronavirus and now like around early March hospitals and labs are deciding to make their own test kits because the Center for Disease Control wasn't doing a good enough job of it. So I also want to highlight here how individuals started freaking out before the World Health Organization started talking about this and calling it a global health emergency. The WHO didn't do that until January 31st. And then even though states in the United States and also just federal agencies, federal facilities were waiting for the CDC to have prepared their testing kits. They're doing a really bad job of it. And they have done a really bad job of it to the point where it has probably hurt the nation keeping the spread of the virus under control. The good thing though with the United States is that there has been a free flow of information online, which is different from what happened with China. On the 27th of January, someone called Dr. Gabriel Leung, he's a dean of the University of Hong Kong, medical school and an expert on SARS he gave a presentation there's a 30 minute version uploaded on YouTube where he makes some really dire predictions it is quite clear that there is already self-sustaining human to human spread in quite a number of major Chinese cities whether these self-sustaining chains of transmission will be sufficient to spark a their own local epidemics ie generate their own local cases over and above what they may be receiving from Wuhan as exported cases. And if that happens, then because we have got at least four major city clusters around the country, north, south, east and west, that have extensive links with the rest of the world's ports, then the chances of seeding sufficient numbers in overseas ports and cities such that they would generate their own local epidemics is not trivial. Again, let me emphasize, it is not a prediction. It is not certain that these findings makes us concerned enough to alert the authorities and to alert the public so that there is not a sense of uncertain panic, but that we are all kept informed by the evidence, by the science as it develops. But as a precautionary public, public health principle, it remains incumbent upon us to prepare for that possibility because that possibility is not trivial. Third, if we want and if we wish and desire to change the course of those epidemic curves that I presented, then we are looking at substantial draconian measures limiting population mobility that should be taken sooner rather than later. Cancellation of mass gatherings, school closures, instituting work from home arrangements within population, but also between population clusters, how do we reduce population mobility? And substantial draconian measures may need to be taken. And thinks that the reported cases, especially from China, are about 10 times higher than what they were saying in January. And that the only thing that's really going to help is slowing the virus so that maybe we can come up with a vaccine before more people get it. And I think that's the really important thing is your response time in order to stop the spread of it 
so that even though most of the population might get infected, we'll be able to deal with it. And the people who are likely to not recover if they don't have proper medical attention, that's like the elderly, because other people aren't taking up their space and because other people aren't transmitting it as much, they might be kind of saved in the long term because we could come up with a vaccine before it got to them. In the United States, only about 500 people have been tested. That is not enough. And what was happening in South Korea, which I'm going to get into now, they can diagnose what's going on. And that's really important because the more they test, the more they find. And if you can't even test for it, then you don't really know what's happening. Only until the end of February, that's when the US government announced a coronavirus task force and I think they just had a meeting like yesterday. I think that's a very slow response time to something that was out there and people were making predictions about it a month ago. Professionals were making predictions about it a month ago and the general public was freaking out about it a month ago and the established organizations like the CDC aren't doing a good job of responding to it. And now with Korea, I guess the big thing to note about them is how transparent they were compared to China. They reported all their stats accurately and that actually gives people a better idea of what's happening inside of China. They have close to 6,000 cases and 32 deaths and up to 10,000 people are being tested daily compared to the 500 people who have been tested in the United States. Korea has a population of about 51 million. US is about 300, 350 million. Nurses and doctors in South Korea are volunteering and people are being trained also to help do all of this testing. An interesting thing to note about South Korea is that they were the country that had the death cult. When I heard about it, I was like, this sounds like something from an anime or something, but it was real life. And they had 30, known cases but the 31st carrier was a member of this cult and they spread it and it jumped from about 30 to about a thousand cases in about eight days and they attribute that to this 31st death cult member. This social aspect with South Korea of people going out of their way to help spread the virus is interesting and if you look at United States culture where people kind of are very individualistic and want to do their own thing I'm wondering if this will help or make it better in terms of mitigating the spread of the virus because there's already been a man in New Hampshire I think it's funny that it's in New Hampshire he was already sick like diagnosed sick and ignored an order to not socialize and he went to some business meeting that I guess he thought he should have attended there's a really funny article where they call him a dimwit and I just thought that was funny <laughs> they were like this dimwit decided to go and disobey the doctor's orders but I also think it might help because people don't travel as much together in the United States. A lot of people have cars and people are spread out in rural areas. That's not the same for lots of countries around the world. So that could help. I'm not sure which way it will go or if they will even cancel each other out, but I think that's interesting to think about. Another incident I heard about on social media was a man who wanted to take his child out of school but the school officials were saying that because they hadn't received an official government directive to do that then he shouldn't but it might be better if people do what they think is best because the government might not know what they're talking about and as a lot of people were pointing out there's a monetary incentive to keep children in school on the part of the school i know that there are other countries out there but these countries stood out to me because one is really known for social repression and a lack of free speech as China, the US is the opposite. And then the ability to organize effectively because a country is so good at enforcing state power might be really effective in some ways. So I'm wondering how all of this is going to play out in the future in terms of how a culture might affect the spread of the coronavirus and if a couple of years from now or a couple of months from now, people will be able to study these countries as case studies of how a culture, a cultural response or a cultural context might affect how that country can respond to a threat. And there are probably pros and cons to each. So that's what I found the most interesting when I was looking at all of this information. I hope you're all safe out there. I hope you're all stocking up on food. It's really hard to know where it will go because that depends on the response of everyone. So it could be a super horrible scenario or it could be not as bad as we think it will be and you can't necessarily predict how everybody's going to act. 
The first case in the U.S. wasn't reported until the 21st of January, but they didn't set up the task force until much later. And I, I think that's foolish because the very first cases in China were really small too. And they didn't respond well and respond quickly enough. And that's why it's blown up now. And then also you, there's a social element that you can't predict, like with South Korea. So you don't know what's going to happen. And isolationist culture might also not help because there's underreporting of the true cases if people can't test themselves. So I'm not doing any statistical forecasting of what's going to happen with the virus. But I am saying I think it's really interesting how different cultures might affect the spread of this highly infectious virus. If it's life and death, should you rely on your own intuition or research or should you rely on the government when it's just other people? Or do you make an assessment of how competent your government is and then go from there? Or make an assessment of how reliable the research you could get on your own is? What do you do? What I do know is that you can't just trust the official narrative necessarily that's clear with China. And that's also clear when you look at the CDC not responding quickly enough, in my opinion. I find all of this very fascinating and I'm just curious about what's going to happen. I'm basically just curious about what's going to happen in the future. So those are my thoughts on the coronavirus situation. Those are my coronavirus thoughts and you should be careful because I might infect you with my thinking. I think there's too much cheese in there. Uh, this metaphorical sandwich here. Okay, <laughs> have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Also, don't forget to drop a donation at justthinkingoutloud.tv slash donate. That takes you to all the various links and sign up for the newsletter. It's monthly so that we don't lose touch because the social media landscape is going to change over time. are distracting me also do check out the links in the description because they're pretty informative i need to move this because this doesn't exist in my j2l videos <laughs> Desiree's back ta-da checking my sound and maybe this should be more. Nah, it's too much. That. That. I don't like that. Oh, the painting did that. I think I might ignore it. Okay.